Yeah, that's fine. We're here today for a uh, collaborative piece between SAPOL, Major Crime, Crime Stoppers South Australia and also Victims of Crime. Uh, behind me are, are three vehicles. Um, it's an innovative idea to put uh, images of three victims in the southern suburbs um, on the vehicles, engage the southern suburbs and um, try and seek information relating to their murders. Crime Stoppers is independent. Uh, we are an avenue where people that know information related to these murders can send that information via Crime Stoppers completely anonymously. Um, we're not worried about who they are, we're just worried, more in interested in the information that comes through. Um, Crime Stoppers have always uh, looked to uh, partner with SAPOL and ideas to generate engagement with the community and today is a, a fantastic release of some of the vehicles today with the, the victims uh, on there and the rewards. Um, happy to answer any questions related to Crime Stoppers and uh, I'll hand over to um, Doc Gray and Bronwyn Kilmire to uh, answer and uh, to respond. Thank you. Hello everyone. Um, I'd just like to talk about the families and friends of these victims. They, they live in uncertainty. These victims um, have been involved in, in drug dealing or have used drugs. That doesn't matter actually. They're victims and they're people and they matter a lot to their family and friends and to the community. So if you know something about this, come forward. Uh, you've heard from Nigel about the rewards. But what I want to emphasise is the trauma that people have when they, they, the uncertainty that they live with about their loved ones. And you know, they, they want answers and they deserve outcomes as well uh, about these crimes. And there may be other crimes associated with this as well and those people also deserve outcomes. So, you know, don't judge the victims. This is about finding out what happened and helping the families and friends come to terms with that. All right, we're extremely grateful for the support of Crime Stoppers and the victims of crime in relation to this initiative. We've already received 81 calls from Crime Stoppers, which is a tremendous result um, and is very high when compared to our other murder investigations. We believe that we can build on that, that we can increase the number and quality of the calls um, through this initiative, and these cars will be operating in the southern areas and in the areas where we think these people were taken from and where the people responsible for those deaths live and conduct their business. As Bronwyn said, it's important that these matters are solved. The people who killed these guys need to be held to account. But above that, they're the same people that are selling drugs on a daily basis in the southern community and wrecking lots of lives. As I say, 81 calls is a wonderful result. I can tell you the quality of those calls is extremely good and a number of those people um, will make a significant contribution towards solving these cases. Uh, as you know, we've had over 200 coronial deaths, which we were going to look at as part of Task Force Southern to see if any of those people who have died as a result of an overdose were in fact murdered. That process has started. We've gone through about 20 of those at our coronial investigation section and we have more to do. We've also received some calls from Crime Stoppers identifying some cases that we should look at. It's not to say that they're necessarily murders, but people have some unanswered questions, so we're happy to do that. I can tell you that there are two definite cases that we will be looking at, and whilst it's too early to be certain of anything, um, we think that they warrant further investigation and there's unanswered questions for those two cases. We also, for Robert Atkins, have been able to develop a much clearer. Sorry, we've also been able to develop a much clearer idea of what happened with Robert Atkins, and we know now for part of the time where he was being held, uh, that was at the home of a woman at North Plimpton, and that same person may be connected with the offences that were committed against Trevor King previously. I'm happy to take any questions. Have you spoken to that woman? Is she a person of interest? 
Um, all of the people have been spoken to at some point and we have conducted um, several interviews with suspects. A number of our suspects, we're fortunate, are already in prison on unrelated matters. So that ensures the community is safe while we're investigating those offences we think they're responsible for. Just how many suspects do you have? We're looking at the role of up to 15 people in the deaths of these people. Are you able to say how uh, the woman involved of Robert Atkins and Trevor King's connected at all? Um, it would be fair to say that that person provided their house and that person was a participant. How long do you think he was kept there in Washington? It's difficult to be certain, um, but we know overall he was held for a week. Is that when you say a participant, does that involve being a participant in the murder of both men? Most likely. And is that before he was taken to Mandaroad? I won't go into the sequence, but he, we obviously know that he was held at Manda Road. Um, we believe he went to another address at Seaford and also to North Plimpton. And then obviously on his final day, she will recall that he was forced to commit a series of crimes in the northern suburbs before being taken to the Mid North where he met his fate. How likely are you to be making any arrests anytime soon? It's very likely that we'll make arrests, but we'll do that at a time of our choosing and when suits best the operational needs for the job. So we're really confident the way it's going. People should be worried um, and um, it's going to be a lengthy investigation because of the amount of people involved. There's 20 coronial cases that have been raised, there's two that warrant further investigation. Are the other 18 been ruled out or they're still that bit ruled out. That's, that's only two from, from there. You, you, are you expecting that there will be more victims? Definitely. Um, I would be surprised if there's not another victim or more victims, but you know, nothing is certain yet. So we'll see how it unfolds. Um, we are looking, as I say, at over 200. So we'll see what happens with that. They've been looked at by a coronial investigation section and when they identify any that they think has some unanswered questions or might benefit from closer examination, they'll be referred on to us and we'll look at those. But Task Force Southern is definitely looking at two. How long is that process likely to take to go through We don't have a time frame, it's as long as it takes. It's a really big investigation. It's it's a long investigation, it's complex and it's challenging. These vehicles, just how will they work? Will they be responding to everyday things? Sort of they're crime scene investigation vehicles. So those vehicles attend all the break-ins in the southern suburbs, the serious assaults, the vehicle crime, do their fingerprinting, process crime scenes. So they'll be driving around the target area um, on a daily basis. And um, people who might have knowledge about what happened will be seeing them. The offenders will be seeing them. Um, they will work and they will generate um, good leads for us. Is that people involved, um, potentially involved, should be worried? Uh, the, all of the people involved in crime are not necessarily bad people. These guys that committed these crimes are bullies and thugs, have done horrific things to these people and the reality is they didn't deserve it, nobody deserves it and I think that a lot of people down south will be just glad with their community and with these people. There will be people associated with the offenders who, who killed these guys, who know what happened. Um, in all probability they don't like the police, you're not doing it for the police. All of these people have families, they have people who love them and cared about them, despite uh, their failings. Um, so I would say to those people, come forward, assist the families, provide answers. You know, it would be fantastic if we could return um, these missing people to their families for Christmas and provide answers. Uh, we haven't done it with this before. We did it with a patrol car in Port Lincoln and it was successful. Um, I'm really confident that this will be a great crime stoppers initiative and will deliver results and help solve this case. <laughs> Thank you.